Annuities, Methods of Saving, and Investments, Part 3. All right, so in this, uh, in this video, we're going to take a look at primarily at the stock market. Uh, the stock market is another way to invest um, because what you're doing is you are purchasing, purchasing, excuse me, ownership in a company. And if the company does well, then the value of your ownership can go up. Of course, if the company doesn't do well, then the value of your ownership can go down. But generally, you can get greater returns over, uh, over, a, re over a longer period of time. You know, you, you're looking for, you know, if you choose a good company, then the, the goal is that that company will continue to do good business and become more valuable as time goes on. And it may, it may be a better, it's, it may be a better savings vehicle than just a basic savings account or uh, a certificate of deposit or something of that nature. We're going to focus on how to read a stock table. But what I want to do first is speak a little bit about some terminology, just in case you don't have, in case you, just to give you some idea of what's going on here. Okay, first, uh, stock is basically shares of ownership in a company. So a company we're all familiar with is the company Apple. And Apple sells shares of stock. And if you hold one share or a thousand shares or a million shares, then you have a little bit of ownership or a lot of ownership in that company. And so that company is working for you as well. Um, as if it makes profits, you get, you get to share in those profits. It profits. If its value goes up, you get to share in the fact that the value has gone up. Okay, so what happens with stocks is fairly straightforward. Basically, you trade them in which you buy or you sell the shares. Um, and you do that on a stock exchange, which is where stocks are traded. New York Stock Exchange, Chicago Stock Exchange, uh, many, of the, uh, many of the countries of the world have their own stock exchange, Japanese, uh, excuse me, Japan, China, Germany, Britain, etc. Okay, there are two ways to make money by investing in stocks. Number one is if you sell the shares for more money than what you paid for them, you make money. So if you, if you buy one share of Apple stock and that one share cost you $10, and a year later you sold that share and that share increased in value to $20, then obviously you just made $10 over the year. Of course, if the, if the company's value went down and you bought the stock for $10 a share, and a year later it was worth $5 a share when you sold it, well, you just lost $5. So two ways to make money. You can also, you know, you can also lose money by, buy, you know, by buying and selling shares, depending upon when you buy and when you sell. The other way you can make money by investing in the stock market or investing in stock is you get dividends. You're an owner, and if the company uh, decides to uh, distribute its profits and they do that by paying what's called a dividend. So again, let's go to Apple. If Apple has a great year and decides we made a lot of money, we're going to pay some of that back to our shareholders. They will, they will pay out a dividend per share and they might pay out a dollar per share as a dividend, as profit. And everyone who owns a share gets a dollar. If you own a thousand shares, you get a thousand dollars, et cetera, et cetera. So those are the two ways to make money by investing in stock. In general, if you're, if you're willing to put money into the stock market uh, with, with companies that are well-managed and that you know have a really solid place in the market, 
Um, you know, you, you're familiar with the company. Again, Apple's a good example. Verizon might be a good example, a phone company currently. Um, and you're saying, you know, this company is a good company. They're, they're doing well, they're expanding, they seem to be making money. I'd like to own some of this, com uh, some of this company and get in on what they're doing well. Then it might make sense to buy, uh, to buy shares in that company. Okay, I'm gonna go to another sheet and talk about how you read a stock table. And I think you can get most of this on here. I'll shift a little bit if I need to. I think that does it. Okay, so reading a stock table. And this is what, uh, this is, again, you know, whether you choose to buy or sell a stock is up to you. Uh, but the idea of what does a stock table tell you is nice to know. So here's a, uh, a stock, uh, this is Federal Express, or FedEx is now called, excuse me, they shortened their name, I don't know, five or 10 years ago to just FedEx. So this is uh, one day's, uh, at the, stock, the stock table changes every day. And this is FedEx's stock table for one day. So what does it tell you? Well, of course, here it tells you what their name is. And this is the symbol um, that they are exchanged under. Normally you have a, a, a three letter or a four letter or five letter symbol, which means there's a lot less writing when it comes to this stock table. Okay, so what do you get? First off on the left here, you get a 52 week high price, a 52 week low price. And what this tells you is, these are the highest and the lowest prices, they're in dollars, in which FedEx stock was traded during the past 52 weeks, during the past year. So if today is uh, just February 23rd, from February 23rd, 2000 of last year to February 22nd of this year, this is the highest and lowest prices that it was traded during that one year. It looks like Federal Express, FedEx, excuse me, had a, you know, that's quite a lot of variation in a year. Now, a low of $34.02 for one share to a high of almost $100 for one share. That's quite a lot, a lot of, uh, a lot of uh, um, variability, quite a difference in the two in this case. Okay, the dividend. This is what I talk about is pro uh, profits, okay? If, they've, if they're paying out, if, if they've chosen to pay out some of their profits, they'll do that in a dividend. It's the price they pay per share, and in this case, it's written in dollars and cents. So they are paying out a dividend of 44 cents per share. So if you own 10 shares, well, 10 times 44 cents, you will get a check for $4.40. That's your dividend. Okay, the yield percent, which is 1% here, the yield percent is the percent yield of the dividend. How much is, uh, what is the dividend as a percent? What does its return look like, an annual return look like as a percent? So 1.0 is simply 1%. Now, this is, you know, dividends might appear, or often appear, maybe be lower than a savings account, for example, depending upon the savings account. And you might think 1%, well, that's not that much. True, but you gotta take into account with a stock that the value of the stock can change, the dividend can change, and so there's more variability, there's more risk in a stock. Um, and so the dividend probably is gonna be a little bit lower because you have other ways to make money. You know, the stock price could change, the dividend could change. So doing a one-to-one -one comparison, 1% 1 to a 3% savings account is not necessarily the best comparison directly because normally the stock has more fluctuation, more potential to be higher than a savings account or a bank account, for example. Uh, PE is price to earnings ratio. Uh, don't worry about that too much. Uh, volume in the 100, volume uh, in hundreds, this tells you the sales volume in hundreds that day, the number of shares traded yesterday. And so 37,701 in hundreds means you have 37,7010. So hundreds up here, you gotta add two more zeros on here. And this tells me that we traded 
3,770,100 shares of FedEx stock yesterday. But it's written this way as in, in hundreds. Okay, high low. Um, this has to do with the highest price and the lowest price each share of stock was traded yesterday. So this stock fluctuated in yesterday's trading only between $43.47 a share as its lowest and $45 a share at its highest. Close. Close is the price at which the shares traded when the stock exchange closed yesterday, the closing price. So at some point it hit a low of 43.47. At some point it hit a, a high of $45 a share. When the stock market closed, it was trading at $44.08, right in between these two in this case. And finally, the net change is again a daily look. These, these three are daily looks. Oh, excuse me, these four are daily, these one, two, three, four, five, excuse me, these five are daily looks. The net change is how much the price changed. It's the change in price from the, from the market closed two days ago to yesterday's market close. So what happened from when it last closed, when it closed two days ago to when it last closed, well, it went down $1.60 per share. Again, minus 1.60 means down $1.60 per share. So this gives you some idea of how to read a stock table uh, and what takes place with how all these things come together. Again, there's more variability in stocks as opposed to a savings account or a, or a more secure investment, and that can be both good and bad. Uh, more variability means you have more risk, but that means you might make out better. Uh, but it also means you might not get, make out worse. So you have to make a, you make a decision on that based upon your feelings about the company. Is this a company that's going to grow and do well? I want to invest. Is this a company that I think is going to start on the decline? You know, things aren't looking very good. Uh, you might want to not invest or you might want to choose to get out of that company before it, uh, before it declines any further.